Hi, I'm Byron Udell, founder of AccuQuote. As you may know, AccuQuote is one of the nation's largest independent life insurance brokerage firms. And over the past 30 years, we've placed over $100 billion worth of life insurance for our clients. Most of it was term insurance in one form or another. So what about the other kind of life insurance, permanent life insurance? Today, I'm going to talk about whole life insurance. Here's something that may surprise you. I have never met a person that has owned a whole life policy for 20 years or longer that's not absolutely thrilled they own it. Whole life insurance is one of the most misunderstood and mismaligned financial products on the planet. You've heard it's expensive, that it's a huge profit maker for the insurance companies, that you should always buy term and invest the difference. Most of this advice generally comes from financial people, but not usually from life insurance experts. These so-called financial gurus often know very little about how whole life works. And because of that, their advice, even though it's well-meaning, is often short-sighted and sometimes terribly misguided. Let's look at the facts. Whole life is generally the most expensive kind of life insurance when you look at it based upon the premiums you'll pay each year for each thousand dollars of death benefit. Does that make it a bad deal? Mm, not necessarily. If you were about to park your car in a major metro area and you had two parking lots to choose from, right across the street from one another, the first one had a sign out front saying parking $10 and the second one had a sign saying parking $20. All of us would obviously opt for the first lot. But what if I added one more detail to the $20 lot? As you get closer, you notice in the fine print that the $20 sign actually says parking $20, but when you leave, you get your money back. With that additional information, I suspect many of us would now opt for the $20 lot, assuming, of course, that we had the $20 on us. Now, life insurance isn't quite that simple, but the analogy helps make a point that, of course, price must be considered in any buying decision, but always in relation to total value. In other words, what are you getting for what you're paying? A lot of people consider me to be one of the nation's foremost experts on life insurance, and I own a lot of life insurance. Among my policies is a whole life policy that I bought 25 years ago when I was just 32. At the time, it seemed like a big premium to pay, but I bought it anyway because I truly believed that what I was getting far outweighed what I was about to pay. Let's take a look at my policy so we can see how things played out. My initial face amount, or death benefit, was $500,000. My annual premium is $4,635. The annual premium includes a disability waiver of premium feature so that if I become disabled, the insurance company will have to pay my premium for me. Thankfully, at least so far, I haven't been disabled and I've paid my premiums faithfully for 25 years. $4,635 a year for a total of about $116,000. So what do I have now? Well, my death benefit has grown through dividends to $643,000. My cash surrender value is currently $217,000. That's right, $217,000. And my cash value increased over the last year by almost $13,000. Each year, my cash value grows by a larger number than the year before. And that happens regardless what happens with the stock market. Safe predictable and positive growth. You'll remember that I mentioned the disability waiver feature. If I had become disabled, the insurance company would have paid my premiums for me and I'd still have the same $217,000 of cash surrender value. Are you aware of any other place you can put your money each year that'll promise you that if you can't do it because of illness or injury preventing you from working, that they'll do it for you? Banks won't. Mutual funds won't. They'd laugh at you if you even suggested it. Only life insurance companies will do this. Will it matter? Well, if you're one of the 25% of Americans that end up suffering from an injury or illness that keeps you from working for an extended period of time during your working lifetime, it sure will matter to you. When I look at my policy and I do the math, I've earned a reasonable rate of return over the period I've owned it. 
somewhere between 4 and 5% cash on cash. I've paid zero taxes along the way because life insurance cash values grow tax deferred. On top of that, I've had somewhere between $500,000 and $643,000 of death benefit along the way, which also has a monetary value that would otherwise cost me additional premiums if I were to go into the market and buy them separately. So, does whole life always make more sense than buying term? Of course not. For most people, whole life is so expensive that to buy enough coverage to adequately protect your family is simply unaffordable. But what if you do have the money and can afford it? Does it make sense to put all your money into whole life? Of course not. But does it make sense to look at whole life as a, as a rock-solid component of a, of a long-term accumulation strategy that protects you against some risks that no other financial instrument can? Absolutely. And I still challenge you to find me anyone who has owned a whole life policy for, from any decent insurance company for over 20 years that's not happy with it. Thanks for listening and feel free to call us anytime for more information.